Here we are going to correct our homework on skeleton equations, trying to recognize the patterns of chemical change introduced to us from our previous lesson, combinations, decomposition, single replacements, double replacements, and a combustion pattern. Also placing into our skeleton all of the appropriate symbols that are being used to describe states of matter, heating, catalyst, and so forth. Really a true test in nomenclature. Let's read number one together. It says solid sodium hydrogen carbonate reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce aqueous sodium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide gas. Our job is to place each one of these words into an appropriate symbol on the left or right side of the arrow to denote reactants turning to products. Well, the first reactant is sodium hydrogen carbonate. Sodium, of course, is Na, carries a plus one charge. Hydrogen carbonate is our polyatomic ion, HCO3 negative. Sometimes we hear that called bicarbonate ion. So to begin with, we have NaHCO3 plus one with a minus one, creating an electrically neutral compound. And of course, the little s will be used to denote the solid state of matter. Solid sodium hydrogen carbonate. NaHCO3, little s, reacts with. We know that verb is the plus sign that separates the two reactants. Hydrochloric acid, hydro, root word, ic. We know the original ending must have been ide, chloride, with its negative one charge. To make it an acid, we hook it to a hydrogen. Hydrochloric acid. We've also learned that acids are always aqueous. Even though it wasn't stated, we have to remember acids are always aqueous for their adjectives. To produce is our arrow. Aqueous sodium chloride, aqueous sodium chloride, NaCl, Aq, comma, would be an and. It made water. In the liquid form, again, we talked about that being redundant to say liquid water, but we know it's there, and carbon dioxide gas. This equation is, actually it is balanced, but the skeleton equation with no coefficients as of yet, that's an upcoming lesson when we practice how to balance. Let's read two. When solid sodium is added to water, Hydrogen gas and aqueous sodium hydroxide are produced. Solid sodium, Na with an S for the state of matter, is added to water in the liquid phase. Hydrogen gas is produced, H2, because it's a molecular compound. Sodium hydroxide, NaOH, aqueous. Again, not balanced, but we have a skeleton in place where the reactants are forming products. Heating potassium chlorate in the presence of the catalyst, platinum metal, produces hydrogen, excuse me, produces oxygen gas. Potassium chloride is left as a solid residue. We're heating potassium chlorate. You see that chlorate? Ending ClO3 chlorate, potassium with its plus one. So the reactant KClO3. We're heating it in a test tube so we know that it will be a solid state. KClO3 solid, heating it. Platinum metal is the other catalyst. Platinum is PT is its symbol and we know that catalysts are just placed on the arrow. Producing oxygen gas and potassium chloride left as a solid residue. So again, it's a product. Potassium chloride, potassium chlorate. Oxygen is separated. Of course, we can see that as a decomposition. Bubbling chlorine gas. Again, that's just an extra adjective. Bubbling a gas through a solution of potassium iodide gives elemental iodine and potassium chloride. So our first reactant is chlorine gas. It obviously is molecular, part of our Lucky 7 Club. Horses need oats for clear brown eyes. 
going through a solution of potassium iodide. Solution means it's dissolved in water. It's aqueous, AQ. Forming elemental iodine. It also belongs to one of our lucky seven. And the elemental form of iodine is indeed solid. Notice our periodic table with the color code iodine number, what number is that? 50, 53 iodine. See how it's a black symbol on our periodic table showing it's a solid element. And potassium chloride is the other product in solution, so it is aqueous. Again, these are not balanced. We're just leaving a place, getting in the habit of where the coefficients will go when we take that next step in our journey of balancing equations. Boy, we have a good looking skeleton right now. And one more on this side. Bubbles of hydrogen gas and aqueous iron three chloride are produced. We're going to point at them as products when metallic iron is dropped into hydrochloric acid. So hydrogen gas is being produced, H2, its elemental form, and aqueous iron three chloride. Roman numeral tells me its charge, so we get aqueous iron three chloride. Iron metal in a metallic state of matter is a solid dropped into hydrochloric acid aqueous for our acids. Again, not balanced, but that's okay for today's lesson. Element plus compound, making a new element in compound, we can predict that to be a single replacement reaction. Bubbles of hydrogen are produced, as well as aqueous iron three chloride, when metallic iron is dropped into hydrochloric acid. There's an A plus on this side. Side two, opposite direction. Read these in terms of words, turning these balanced equations into words. I see a little G, Cl2. I'll start by saying that's gaseous chlorine. The plus sign I've told you, I want that to be a verb, so say reacts with. NaIAQ, that's sodium iodide. So I'm going to write aqueous sodium iodide. The arrow, I'll just simply say to form. Aqueous sodium chloride. And solid iodine. Gaseous chlorine reacts with aqueous sodium iodide to form aqueous sodium chloride and solid iodine. Number two. H2SO4 AQ, do you recognize that as an acid? SO4 is sulfate. H turns to ick and we name that as an acid. Sulfuric acid. I do not have to put the aqueous. It's okay if it's there, but it's not necessary. Here's my verb. Reacts with aqueous barium chloride and now my arrow we can say to form or yields produces lots of choices there. We have BASO4, little s, so I put that as solid barium sulfate. The plus sign, I'll put the word and. AQHCl is, is uh, hydrochloric acid. I almost wrote aqueous, but it's not necessary. It's just redundant because acids are always aqueous. So hydrochloric acid. Sulfuric acid reacts with aqueous barium chloride to form solid barium sulfate and hydrochloric acid. Number three might have been tough unless you knew H2O2 with its common name. H2O2 is known as hydrogen peroxide. Probably a stumper for us. H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide. 
and then we just go straight to the arrow with a little catalyst over it. So I'm going to put in a different verb. I'll put decomposes, probably familiar to us from our lab experience, one reactant breaking down, decomposes in the presence of a catalyst and that catalyst will name that as manganese dioxide. Forming water, not liquid water, but just water, and oxygen gas. Hydrogen peroxide, notice I left the aqueous off of that peroxide as well. It's assumed that we know hydrogen peroxide. It's in your medicine shelf at home, I bet. If you get a little scratch, your mom will put that on. It will bubble up and kill bacteria. Hydrogen peroxide is always aqueous, just as acids are. So that was, probably was very unfamiliar to us. I bet you needed some help there to complete that correctly. Number four, a little combination reaction here. We have gaseous chlorine. Reacts with would be our verb. Gaseous oxygen. Forming, or to form. Now this is a molecular compound, so we're going to hear prefixes. Dichlorine pentaoxide. Gaseous, I should have put that first, but that's all right. I got it in there. Gaseous dichlorine pentaoxide. Just so it's there. And one more. We have solid copper. And here's my verb. Reacts with aqueous silver nitrate. And our arrow, how about we say to form solid silver and aqueous, did you remember your Roman numeral? Copper to nitrate. Solid copper reacts with aqueous silver nitrate, forming solid silver and copper to nitrate aqueous. There, my friends, is an A+. Plus. If indeed it is complete and perfect, please turn it into the tray up on our table. We'll be starting a notepad lesson as the next step of today.